introduction to hardware, uh, introduction to MyDAC. So the features of a MyDAC, applications of the MyDAC. So we have seen all those things, right? So uh, now we'll just try to see, uh, you know, how to work with uh, the MyDAC. Okay. So I uh, you know I was just, uh, you know, explaining you guys uh, regarding the soft front panel, right? So uh, now we'll just, uh, you know, try to work with the same. Okay, like audio equalizer and uh, the digital multimeter. Like I uh, will just try to explore the different features of uh, you know, the MyDAC. Right. So I just shared my screen. I hope uh, everyone can just see my screen. Yeah. Can you just acknowledge, sir? Harish, sir. I hope you people can screen. Sir. Yeah. Uh, screen, sir. One second. Yeah. Not it, sir. Ah, Not yes, sir. Now, now it's okay. No, it's present. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay. Fine, thank you. Okay, sir. So, yeah. So, I was just, you know, uh, explained about the digital reader and digital writer. Okay. Same, similarly, I'll be just going to uh, show you about the function generator and oscilloscope. Okay. So, uh, how exactly the function generator and oscilloscope works? Okay. So, will it be same similar to uh, the labs what the students will be using? So, we'll just check here. Yeah. So, uh, here towards uh, left hand side, so what are the looks? It's you know uh, the function generator, and towards the right hand side, whatever it looks, it's an oscilloscope. Okay. So uh, we call this actually as an you know virtual function generator and virtual oscilloscope. Okay. So why we call virtual? I hope you'll be knowing. So uh, virtual in the sense it can be worked or it can be you know uh, take the output, but it cannot be physically seen. Right. So, but working wise, okay, whatever the lab setup, what the function generator or what the oscilloscope uh, we are using in the lab. Okay, it's more similar to uh, the same virtual uh, function FG and as well as the oscilloscope. Okay, so same even we are having the same options like uh, you know we here we are uh, there also we are having two channels right two channel probes can be connected. Uh, so here also you have a channel zero as well as a channel one. Okay, so respected to that you have a scale per you know scale words per division. Uh, even you have a time per division. Okay. So uh, even for you know uh, checking the graph, you have you know the screen, right? So all those things you know, even you have some sort of advanced settings, like maybe you can just you know uh, enable the filter if at all you are getting a more noise. Okay. So you know these sort of you know some basics uh, you know sort of things have been available in this function generator and oscilloscope option. So if we come back to the function generator FG. So here also we can just try to uh, generate three sort of uh, different uh, waveforms: sine, triangle, as well as a square. Okay. So we can just you know tune the frequency, amplitude, the DC offset. Okay. So here you can just give the start and stop frequency. So all those you know necessary things, whatever in the lab, it's uh, facility, it's been available. The same thing can be implemented here also. Okay. So maybe if you, know, you can just ask us, may, you know, uh, so where the circuit will be regarded and the, how it will be connected. Okay, like as soon as in lab students will be, say, you know, uh, rig up the circuits in the breadboard itself. The same thing uh, here also will just rig up uh, the same circuit, uh, you know, I'm on the breadboard. Okay, so after that we'll be just, you know, uh, taken a single stand wire and we'll be just connecting. Okay. So in the labs also we'll be just doing the same. We'll be connecting the probes, right? So uh, from the function generator also the input will be provided, and from the oscilloscope will be you know taken out the output like uh, V out or I O. Okay. So same similarly, we just try to connect uh, the wires. Okay. So after connecting the wires, we'll be just uh, you know uh, check whether we want to generate the signals or we want to acquire the signals, right? Like in the morning session, as I said. So A I is meant for acquisition and A O is meant for generation. Okay. 
so uh, like previously uh, i just made these connections right so uh, you know i have been connected from ai 0 plus to ao 0 and ai 0 minus to ac okay so this uh, connection i have been made okay so now what i'll do is uh, i'll just start you know uh, sending the signals from means i am so i'll be just starting from the function generator okay so here first before starting check uh, to which device your uh, you know uh, DAC has been connected or your laptop has been connected and you can just see uh, here in the function generator we have having only two options AO0 and AO1 okay let's let me take the magnifier okay so you can just see uh, AO0 and AO1 okay so only two uh, you know channels have been uh, there in the signal route so this is what the function generator okay function generator we all know that function generator is meant to generate the signals right so uh, based on the type of signals either it may be a sine square triangle so based on the signal so this will go to generate the signals okay so that's why i told you i know AO analog output is meant for to generate the signals and analog input is meant for to receive the signal means to you know to acquire the signals right so first i'll just run the oscilloscope uh, sorry the function generator so you can just see uh, now the present state is off okay so when i click on run so you can just say it is been generating uh, you know sine wave with 100 hertz frequency with one volt peak to peak okay so you can uh, easily recognizable right so later part, I'll just try to run uh, the oscilloscope. So you can just see, okay. So the only thing I have did is, I've just given a connection from AI0 plus to AO0 and AI0 minus to AG, analog ground. Okay, so that I'm, you know, getting this sort of uh, waveform. Okay, while well, I have been selected with sine wave. Okay, so if I give, uh, you know, uh, 200, Hertz frequency. Okay. So now instantly the frequency is changing. So if you want to change a time per division, so you can just change the time per division. Okay. So you can just change the signals uh, also. So if you want uh, to hold peak to peak, you can just change it. So now it is showing you the to hold peak to peak amplitude. If you want the three volt, and just give it back to the three volt. Okay, so right now it is generating sine wave. So if you just give it to triangle wave, so it can just immediately. So it won't take any delay. Okay, so it immediately uh, change to the triangle. So even the square, if you want a square, you can just generate a square. So based on the frequencies used. Okay. So right now it's been, I know, uh, selected as a channel zero. Why? Because AI zero is meant for channel zero and AI one meant for channel one. Okay. So here based on uh, here the duty cycle, if you want to even, you can just change the duty cycle. Like if you want 60% duty cycle, like it will be showing the 60% on time and 40% will be off time. Okay. So based on uh, our requirement, we can just change uh, change it accordingly. Okay. So even you can just change the signal type. Fine. So you can just change uh, time per division or volts per division. Okay. So all those things, you know, uh, the necessary things, whatever the. Oh, I know the original FG as well as oscilloscope means the physical FG and oscilloscope, whatever we see. Okay, so same similar features will be available. Okay, and even uh, you know the students also need not to carry the entire FG, you know, function generator or oscilloscope or any external power supply. Okay, so if they want to work with any other, uh, you know, the labs or any other, uh, you know, the theory classrooms or even they can work with their own homes okay so 
this sort of you know the hardware will be very much useful for the students to learn their you know core engineering subjects like as i you know specified the signal sensing systems control system analog communication digital communication okay so they are having lot of you know uh, the experiments like filters okay so uh, so those kind of things rectifiers filters right so these sort of experiments can be obviously done with the mida okay so the only thing they have to know about is how to work with the mida fine so and how this can be implemented in their syllabus as well as uh, their projects also right so uh, many in many colleges they have already you know uh, bought this mida i hope in uh, nagarjuna college also uh, you know uh, people are having a mida okay so uh, you just try to you know give exposure to the students so that uh, they will be start doing their final year projects okay so that will be very much useful for them in their you know uh, next uh, their in, uh, in their job uh, career okay so uh, hope you know uh, people are working on the uh, the same okay so i hope you know uh, if they start giving this sort of exposure to students maybe they will be very much useful for them to learn uh, theoretically as well as practically also right so this is with respect to the you know, the function generator and oscilloscope uh, only by using only just two wires with uh, you know loop back connection okay so ultimately we'll be getting uh, you know the proper output according to like expecting output uh, like what few people have been dig up with the circuits okay fine so this close this okay so this is with respect to uh, the function generator and oscilloscope fine so next we'll just see with respect to digital multimeter so you can just see this is how the uh, multimeter panel looks okay so i'll just connect with the probes okay so they, there is no like you know special probes for uh, to connect this mida so we can just use the probes whatever we'll be using in uh, our labs okay so the same wire can be used So now uh, here first you have to check the device. So to which device you have been you know, connected. So I'll be just checking the device. So the device has been connected to NMIDI. Okay. So and here uh, they are given some certain sort of option. Like morning I have told you can just measure the AC current, DC current, AC voltage, DC voltage, resistance, continuity, okay, diode. So all those things can be uh, you know measured. So right now it's been you know uh, taken it as uh, DC voltage, okay, and uh, this is AC voltage. So if you see you know morning I have told you for AC sorry for DC voltage, okay, so you can measure up to 60 volt, okay, and for uh, AC voltage you can measure up to 20 volt. So that is what you know the maximum capacity, so that my deck can hold, okay. So next, you can just see uh, the DC current. Okay, so the DC current can be uh, minimum will be the 20 milliamps. It means you can just measure minimum will be the 20 milliamps or maximum will be the one amp. Okay, this is with respect to DC current. Okay, if you want to go for AC current, so even AC current also uh, minimum will be 20 milliamps and maximum will be the one amp here. Okay. So both current can be measured up to one ampere. So same similarly, like you can just uh, check the you know the resistance. Okay, uh, either it may be 200, 2 kilo. So maximum you can just measure up to uh, 20 mega ohm. Okay, so up to 20 mega ohm you can just try to uh, you know measure the resistance. Okay, 
so like how uh, we will be just measuring in terms of you know, uh, the multimeter okay so same similar options have been available I demand you can just check the continuity okay so so I'll just select and I'll just click on run okay now it is showing it as a open okay so I hope uh, you yeah, know people have cleared the sound right so whenever this uh, you know, check the continuity so it is saying it is good so I can just you know check the continuity also right so next if you come to measure the voltage okay so I have been trying to measure the DC voltage okay so now what I'll do I'll just uh, tap the pro okay Yes, so I hope you can just see uh, the voltage levels. So now I'm, you know, just trying to measure the 5 volt, okay, uh, 5 volt DC. So you are just getting around like 5, 5.1 uh, voltage, okay. So now I'm trying to measure the 15 volt, okay. So uh, you can just see exactly you're getting a 15 volt. So same similarly, if I were measuring a minus 15, trying to you know measure the minus 15 volt okay so next the plus 15 next 5 volt okay so i am having three different power supplies since i told uh, okay i am trying to measure all the three 5 plus 15 minus 15. okay so since uh, we have not rigged any circuit okay to measure the current so uh, unfortunately we are unable to you know i am unable to measure the current so but uh, same as usual like here you can just set the range if you want you know uh, to be within 2 volt or within 20 or within 60 so maximum will be the 60 and here you will be having two different uh, you know probe slots okay so uh, right now i have been connected to uh, measure the voltage okay so that's why i have been connected to the common probe as well as uh, towards your left hand side whatever the probe you can just see uh, this both can be connected to measure the voltage okay towards the right hand side what are uh, the hi uh, symbol you can just see in it in red color so this where you can able to measure with current okay so i have to change the probes okay so where in multimeter uh, we'll be having only two slots on you know the positive and one negative okay so if at all you are measuring any current or any voltages or any uh, continuity or anything so you can you will be you know only connecting to that particular uh, probe slot but here in my deck you have you know different uh, you know the probe slot why because for voltage itself you will be having uh, different uh, circuitry and for current itself you will be having a different circuitry part fine so uh, this is what with respect to the multimeter okay so i hope uh, we have been you know understood what, how exactly these things will work yes so i can just try to measure the dc voltage fine so by just using you know the two probes so instead of using external multimeter 
So uh, if at all you are using the probes, so immediately the students are, uh, you know, uh, students can open the soft front panel and they can able to mesh. Okay, let's click on stop. Fine. So uh, next, maybe you can just uh, go with the audio equalizer. Okay. So here you can just see uh, in this audio equalizer. Okay. So I've been taken, uh, no, the 3.5 mm jack audio jack cable, and I've been connected to uh, the audio in. Okay. So another end will be connected to the. Uh, either it can be connected to your laptop or it can be connected to your, uh, you know, the EF. Okay. So uh, first, you know, audio in should be connected to the source. Okay. Source will be either to your laptop or your mobile. Okay. Where you can, you'll be able to, you know, play some music or anything. Okay. So here uh, I have to select to which device. Okay. Here you'll be having, you know, two sort of things, audio left, audio right. Okay, audio input left, audio input right, audio output left and audio output right. So here all the same channels have been selected. Okay, and uh, one thing uh, you can just do here will be your equalizer. Okay, so I hope everyone will be known about equalizer where you can able to increase or decrease the volume. Okay, so. Uh, here you can increase the bass or decrease the you know increase or decrease the bass mid tone and uh, you know treble. Okay, so all these things we can be you know are done using this soft front pan. Okay, so before starting this, what uh, you can just do is you can just play the song. Okay, so you can just play some you know uh, some sample music or anything. Some you know I am just trying to play some sample music so that if I click on start, you can just see, see here uh, you know uh, uh, waves are being just created. Okay, so these uh, waves will be keep on you know acquired. Like whenever your you know phone starts playing the music, okay, so those music will be sent via your audio cable. Okay, so sent via audio cable and from that audio cable it will be. Uh, keep on acquire. Okay, so here also you can just you know uh, give the maximum sound or uh, minimum sound. You can just see the changes. Okay, so I just you know some con I just kept some constant volume. Okay, in the phone, so you can just increase or you can just decrease the volume. And here uh, in the waveform itself, you can just see the difference, feel the difference. Okay, you can increase the mass, table, mid tone. Okay. So since I don't have you know any sort of a loudspeaker, so I could not able to show you a demo, okay, where the music plays. But uh, you can just observe uh, you know uh, the frequencies or a time here. Okay. So whenever if I just keep all the things low, okay, so you can just see uh, the waveform will become totally new. Okay. So I just kept all the things low, but still my song is still playing. Okay. So if you just try to keep something, you know, uh, somewhere else in the middles, okay, uh, with some values. So maybe, uh, maybe the uh, you know waveforms will be keep on, uh, you know, reflecting. Okay, here we are getting the two waveforms actually speaking. So one will be in the red color and one will be in the blue color. So uh, where is nothing but audio left and audio right. Okay. So usually if we wear our iPhone, uh, okay, the, sorry, the earphones. Okay. So the earphones will be uh, obviously it will the song sounds so will be spread through audio left and audio right. Right. So uh, it's better to you know uh, go with both the, the sound part like audio left as well as audio right. Okay. So maybe these things can be able to be you know. Uh, use it in any of your projects or uh, any such kind of thing. 
with respect to audio equalizer if at all uh, you're working with this part okay so yeah so here if you see here you are getting with respect to time and here you are getting with respect to frequency okay so like in what frequency way we are getting uh, your song okay so all those things can be measured here fine then just click on stop okay so i hope uh, i get you know got some uh, idea regarding uh, how to work with you know the digital multimeter frequency with uh, you know with respect to function generator and oscilloscope and with respect to audio equalizer okay so these are some of the you know uh, basic features of this uh, dac so where it will be you know very much useful for the students like all the instruments like you uh, know uh, function generator power supply external power supply oscilloscope digital multimeter and uh, audio input audio output like all uh, five to six uh, different instruments are being single you know uh, integrated with this single dac right so obviously it will be very much you know uh, comfortable to use with the students either it may be a project or any uh, the research things okay so it will be very useful useful for them in the uh, you know current uh, extra curricular activities or anything so that uh, even students will feel uh, you know okay this subject is very much easy and you know uh, we can easily try to implement the projects or those kind of uh, sub will be have fine okay so this is what with respect to uh, you know some some features of the dac okay so maybe i'll be just uh, you know uh, showing you the demonstration of uh, the next So this is what with respect to the some uh, you know very familiar uh, applications with respect to the instrument uh, launch. Okay, so okay so now uh, we'll just try to see how uh, this mida can able to be work with the uh, lab okay so how to integrate with this fine so for that we need to uh, you know uh, install the lab view okay so for that thing uh, so morning itself i told you we have to install the necessary drivers okay so since uh, you know, I am using a LabVIEW 2018, okay. So it's a licensed version. So the same thing, even a driver also uh, has to be installed. So when I installed the driver, okay. So so take some time to you know open uh, the LabVIEW. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll just try to uh, you know control the applications from uh, LabVIEW to uh, the MyDAC. Means we'll just try to uh, talk with the MyDAC, or we'll just start to acquire the data, or from we'll just try to generate the data from the MyDAC. Right? Okay. Okay. So I'll just go to file, uh, take a new VI. okay so here uh, now whatever the programming part we do right so uh, here based in the lab view we are just going to control the mydac now like maybe we'll be connecting any sort of a sensor or any sort of a transducer okay so we'll be just start try to okay this is yeah okay so uh, maybe uh, here, if you just go for, uh, if you just right click on the block diagram, 
So here you have an option called measurement IO. Okay. So in this measurement IO, if at all you try to install uh, DAC MX drivers or Elvis MX uh, device drivers, we'll be ha having this uh, you know option NI DAC MX. Okay. So if at all you are in a set of drivers, okay. So you'll be not able to get this. option okay so uh, make sure that uh, you install the lab view properly okay so to that lab view we can just try to install a two bits version of a lab view if at all you are using lab view 2018 okay like since uh, whatever i have been using lab view 2018 so here uh, i have been installed n9 i know dac mx 1800 or n9 elvis 1800 elvis elvis Okay, so this office maybe will be available in uh, you know the Google. Okay, or if not else, maybe I'll be sharing you guys. Okay, so make sure that uh, if at all you want to work for the DAC, work with the DAC, so you have to install the proper set of drivers. Okay, so since this palette will be available, if at all you are using. Uh, installed DAC MX, okay? So here, uh, you are having one option called DAC Assist, okay? So we call this as a DAC Assistant, okay? So why we call this as a DAC Assistant is, so if at all you use this sort of, uh, you know, the functions, okay? So there will be just uh, cross-checking with the settings, configuration settings will be done. So for an inbuilt purpose, Okay, so LabVIEW will be created a code by its own in a packet. Okay, I repeat once again. DAC assistant is nothing but it will be it will be used. Okay, so to just go with the configuration settings. So we need to just select what we want and what uh, you know what exactly we need. Okay, so if we do the configuration settings, so based on that it will develop a VI. Or means it will develop a code in a backend so that backend code we cannot be seen okay so i'll just take a DAC assistant and i'll just try to place it on the block diagram so as soon as you try to place it here okay so it will initialize and it will be open one configuration setting panel yes window okay so it's been open so here uh, the two things will be available so either you can just generate or you can acquire okay so based on the sensors or based on the requirement you use okay so right now uh, what i'll do is i'll just try to uh, you know demonstrate you uh, one thing okay so i'll be using uh, some sensors okay some digital sensor and some analog sensor i'll be using so the first sensor uh, I'll be taken will be uh, the IR sensor. Okay. So I hope uh, everyone knows about IR sensor. Why uh, we use IR sensor? Okay. So to just you know detect whether any object is there uh, in front of it, right? So we'll be just measuring. Uh, sorry, we just detect whether uh, you are having any sort of object in front of it. Fine. So I'll be just doing a connection now for IR sensor. Okay, so for IR sensor, we'll be having three different uh, pins. One will be the plus five volt. Okay, so why? Because it works under the plus five volt. And uh, one more will be the ground. One more terminal pin will be the ground. And third pin will be the out. Out in a sense. So it will be connected for the output. Okay. So now I have been connected five volt. Okay, so I have been connected five volt to the DAC five volt. Why? Because we have to power up first, right? So later part I have connected to ground. So one more pin is going to ground. I have connected to ground. Okay, so I am taking a one more pin, means uh, one more pin out, and I'll be connecting to. Uh, the pin number zero. Okay. By default, pin number zero. I'll be connecting uh, my digital output. Okay. 
Okay. So after connecting, so here I want to know whether I want to acquire the signal or to generate the signal. Okay. So here, uh, you know, uh, using IR sensor. So what I am doing, IR sensor will detect some object and it gives back some result, right? So that result should be read by the DAC. Okay, whatever the object uh, it's been detected, so that object should be read by the IR sensor. From IR sensor, it will be sent to a DAC. Okay, from DAC, it will be sent via the USB cable and it will be appeared on my laptop screen. Okay, so here I'll just go with acquire signal. I'll just click on acquire signal. So here it will be asking whether you want to go with analog, counter, or digital. Okay, so it is asking on which domain, like on which, uh, what thing you are working. Okay, so here I am just uh, right now I'm working on the digital part. So I'll just select a digital. Why? Because IR sensor is a you know, digital sensor. Okay. So make sure that what type of sensor you are using. Okay. Before making the connections, make sure that what type, kind of sensor you are using, whether that sensor can be accessible with the hardware, whatever we are have. Okay. So we have to just do the analysis first. So then later part, you have to uh, make the connections to the hardware. Fine. So now uh, I'm just acquiring the signal under the digital. So here it is asking whether you want to go with the line port or line input or port input. Okay. So I'll just give the difference between a line input and port input. So line input is nothing but uh, if at all you are trying to choose the individual line, like DAO 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So if at all using the individual, I know the line, uh, you have to individual port, uh, thing. So I have to go with the line input. If at all you are using all the eight, okay, all the eight DAOs, if at all you are using at the same time, so then you are supposed to choose for port input. Okay, so I repeat once again, line input is nothing but if at all you are using the single lines, like think that out of eight lines you are using only three lines or only five lines then you are supposed to choose line input if at all you are trying to choose the entire DAOs like from starting from DAO 0 to DAO 7 if at all you are using the entire line okay so then you are supposed to choose for port input okay so as of now I am just trying to take only DAO 0 so I will go with line zero port okay so after clicking on that line zero so it will ask in which device you are being connected so under which device okay so since i have told you know the pci and pxi are being simulated like previously i was using that simulated the pc and pxi so since i i know i don't want to use now the pci or pxi hardware section so why because i am working on my DAC right now so i'll just select ni my DAC one okay that is what my hardware name correct so next here uh, i am you know connected to port zero or line number zero so i just select that particular thing if at all you are connected to any other uh, you know line so you can just uh, select which line you, uh, you know, your pin has been connected. So later part, finish. So first, uh, whether you want to acquire or generate the signal. Okay. So after that, you are supposed to select, you know, uh, to which input, uh, like either you are going with analog or digital or a counter. So I have to select based on uh, your requirement. Okay. So then later part, you have to select a device. Okay, so after device, selecting the device, okay. Fine, after selecting the device, 
So here it is showing, uh, if you want, you can just click on the details. So here it is showing uh, my DAC one port zero or line zero. Okay. So this is what uh, being selected. And the acquisition mode also, uh, you can just check like a uh, one sample on demand, one sample hardware time, n samples and continuous samples. Let me just uh, brief it out very uh, easily so that you people can understand it much better. Okay, so one sample on demand. Okay, so what exactly this uh, acquisition mode tells in the sense, you are trying to demand means uh, for each and every samples you are demanding, uh, you know, the acquisition part means for each and every cycle or every sample you are trying to acquire the, uh, you know, the sensor input. Okay, so if you want uh, that kind of option, maybe you can just go with one sample on demand. So HW timed in the sense hardware timed. Okay. So one sample hardware timed in the sense, maybe you can just give uh, some fixed time, like right? So uh, starting from zero to 0 0.1 uh, seconds. So I want the signals to be, uh, you know, generated within some milliseconds. Okay. So if the such kind of activities are being going on, maybe you can just go with one sample hardware time. So n samples, n sample is nothing but like a number of samples. So how many number of samples you want, you can just uh, give a specification here. So we, here you have option samples to read and rate in Hertz. Okay. So n samples is nothing but uh, here if at all you are trying to pass, you know, a thousand samples in one second. Okay. But you want to read only a hundred samples out of 1000 okay so at that particular point of time here you have to clearly specify what is the rate of hertz like 1k or 2k 2 kilohertz 3 kilohertz 5 kilohertz okay so after specifying here you have one more option called samples to read okay samples to read in a sense out of 1000 samples if i want to i know read only the 100 samples or 250 samples you can just specify it here over here okay so right now it is disabled why because i am using one sample on demand so if i use n samples you can just see if this both will be enabled okay so continuous samples is nothing but like uh, whenever the sensor will be keep on trying, you know acquiring the data so even in the lab you also you no need to stop the when uh, you got, you know, we are not trying to reach to the maximum limit or to the minimum limit. So at that particular time of point of time, so continuous samples will be keep on going, right? So as of now, I just go with one sample on demand and I just click on OK. Okay. So after clicking on OK, maybe you can just observe here. It will be showing you or it will be in a backend team. It will be building a VA for you for this configuration. Okay, so after this, so here it will be ultimately you are getting a data. Okay, so here whatever you are getting, it has a data. Okay, so if you right click in this data, okay, so I just create an indicator. Okay, I just created an indicator. I'll just try to resize this LED. Okay, so and moreover, whatever the output you get from this DAC assistance in uh, the digital will be always in terms of array. So that's why you're getting, you know, n number of elements means n number of leds will be uh, given so what i'll do i'll just click on run okay so run continuously i have just given why because i have not used any loops okay so that uh, if i want to check my output continuously so i have to use run uh, continuously fine 
so now we can just see uh, only one led has been activated and remaining all are uh, you know uh, shaded part means it is disabled so if you see uh, i just kept some object in front of uh, the i s sensor whatever i have been connected to the dac so it is uh, the first led is glowing when i kept uh, some object in front of that so when i just remove of you know the remove of the object in front of i s sensor can you see the led is turn now if you see it is turning on means some particle or some object is in front of the ir sensor and whenever you are trying to you know move move it far okay it will be turned saying that no signals have been recorded means uh, none of the signals have been started to generate Okay. So this is how we can able to, uh, you know, to, you know, acquire the data from lab view and you know, from the DAC to the lab view. Okay. So think that if you want, you know, I don't want all this LED should be there. I want only a single LED should be available. Like, uh, you know, I'll be just right click on front panel and I'll take an LED. So think that only this single LED will, should be available. So what you can do is I'll just delete this array. Okay. So I have one function in array palette. So if you right click on the right, uh, you know, block diagram, go to array palette. Here you have option called indexed array. So I'll just take that indexed array. So I'll connect to the out indicator. Okay. So if I click on run and continuously, so now you can just set the output in a uh, single LED. So but previously also you were just getting the output in single LED, but in terms you are having uh, a number of LEDs disabled. Okay. So why it has been given in a sense, if at all you're trying to activate, okay, so more number of uh, LED or more number of sensors, okay, so think that you want to connect it in a series or it may be in a parallel, so you have to read. So for that sake, the output, whatever you get from a digital, so it will be in terms of an array. So right now I have shown you demonstration on the IR sensor. Okay, so it is a digital sensor. So whenever you try to connect uh, the pins like 5 volt, ground, as well as A and B, right? So, uh, sorry, not A and B, like uh, digital out. Okay, so it will be uh, just trying to connect for uh, any of the pins. Okay. So any of the DIOs will be connected. So and that DIOs will be mentioned in this DAC assistant, right? So that DAC assistant will be, you know, uh, generate some sort of a code in an, a backend thing, like as I told. Okay, that cannot be seen or that cannot be watched. Okay, so this is where uh, you can, you know, uh, just directly access your uh, DAC hardware from the lab. Okay, so if you are having any doubts, so please let me know so that I can, you know, uh, clear your doubts so then and there itself so that we can just go with the next topic. Fine. So I hope, uh, you know, uh, there's no doubt. I know. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, okay. Okay. So this is what with respect to the analog part. Sorry, uh, the digital part. Okay. 
So next I'll be showing you with respect to the analog uh, sensor. Okay, so maybe for that analog sensor, you know, we have just taken a sensor of uh, LM35 temperature sensor. Okay, so uh, where even that uh, temperature sensor will be having the three leads, right? So uh, one will be the voltage and one will be the ground. Okay, so and another one will be the output. Okay, so we'll just, uh, you know, uh, see how to connect uh, LM35 sensor for you know uh, for the DAC pinouts okay so and where to connect so I'll be just you know uh, connecting the things okay so if I show you here the sensor If I just try to search with the temperature sensor. Yes. So uh, this is how uh, the temperature sensor looks. Okay. So LM35. So we'll be having a three leads, okay? So first one will be connected to uh, the voltage, okay, five volt. So parallelly, I'll just make the connections. So first thing will be connected to the plus 5 volt. So I'll just connect that to the plus 5 volt. Okay. And uh, the middle thing will be connected to the analog out. Okay. So analog out in a sense. So make sure that uh, what type of sensor you are using will be uh, very much important okay so don't blindly we should not you know say that okay it is connected to uh, it is showing analog out so we have to connect for analog out no so actual part is okay if it is giving the sense uh, output will be the analog out okay so these things have been you know connecting for acquisition why you can just ask me why because LM35 uh, sensor will by default will give some uh, you know random voltage whenever you are getting uh, you know uh, if at all you are trying to give the voltage levels like as soon as you try to give uh, the positive as well as a negative like VCC and ground okay so it will try to just uh, you know start randomly giving the output okay so that output should be acquired by our hardware okay so what i am doing here now is the whatever the analog out the pin number two you are uh, seeing there okay will be connected to ai zero plus okay why because whatever the out means whatever the values it's been generating has to be recorded means it has to be acquired so that uh, i am just you know uh, trying to connect with ai zero plus and a uh, ground as usual the ground should be connected to the agnd okay so i'll be connecting to ground uh, pin number 3 to agnd okay so after connecting there 
okay so we have to do uh, the one more connection that is very much important so ai zero minus right so that ai zero minus should be again loop back to ground okay so i'll just write down the connections here So ln three five pin one should be connected to plus five volt. Okay. So ln three five pin two should be connected to ai zero plus. Okay. And ln three five. Pin number three should be connected to the ground. Means the AGND, and you have one more, uh, you know, uh, the option. Means one more connection. AI zero minus should be connected to again the AGND. Okay. So here, no worries. You can just try to connect this. Uh, both the AG and D, right? So this both the AG and D can be shorted. No worries. Okay, but make sure that whenever you are trying to work with uh, AI, okay. So this AI zero minus to AG and D or AI one minus to AG and D compulsorily this thing should be connected. This one wire should be connected. If at all you are not connecting, uh, what will be happen? I'll be just showing. Okay, but as of now, uh, I have connected with these connections. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to uh, make a code for this. How to acquire? Okay, how to acquire? In a sense, I'll just right click. Okay, I'll just go to uh, a numeric indicator, or you can just uh, since it is a virtual thing. Okay, maybe you can just. Uh, Seen it in a gauge also. Okay, I'll just change the range. You can just check the temperature. So, or uh, even you can just uh, change or even just take uh, the thermometer since we are dealing with the temperature. Okay, so I'll be just take an in thermometer also. Okay, so no worries. Like maybe you can just you know try to represent in an you know the user interface should uh, looks good. Why? Because since we are working on uh, you know the lab view. Okay, so since lab view is an uh, graphical uh, programming tool, so if at all you're trying to use uh, demonstrate in a virtual manner or user interface feels good. Okay, so the look wise it will be. Uh, looking very nice, fine. So now, same similarly, I'll just right-click on the block diagram, go to measurement I/O, take uh, my DAC MX. Okay, I'll just select a DAC assistant and place it on the block diagram. So as soon as I place, you'll get one more window, the configuration window. Okay. So here it is asking whether you want to acquire or generate. Okay. So since LM35 uh, cannot, uh, you know, uh, generated by us, since it will be generated by itself, so it will be giving some sort of output for us. So we are going to acquire it. Okay. So whether you are dealing with analog or counter or digital. So since we are dealing with analog, so I'll just go with analog. So here comes the part. Okay. So here you are having n number of options, whether under analog, whether you want to go with the voltage or temperature, strain, current, resistance, position, okay, like n number of uh, units are available here. Okay, so uh, you can just ask that uh, we are using LM35 sensor. So since it is a temperature sensor, we have to use a temperature. Yes, so uh, actually saying no, we cannot use uh, you know the temperature why? Because this temperature, I know the unit will be always 
uh, measured in terms of uh, thermocouple or RTD or thermistor. Okay, so it, this cannot be directly connected to an uh, you know the temperatures. Okay, so instead I'll be just using the voltage. Okay, so you can ask me why you are only using a voltage? Why not other like current or resistance thing? Okay, so why because Any questions? Okay, fine. Yeah. So here, if it comes, okay. So since I have told you the whatever the DAC we are using, my DAC it's actually basic uh, basic DAC. So it is used for the students' purpose, student use. Okay. So if at all you want to go with this temperature, strain measurement, current, or uh, you know, the resistance measurement, so since we are, you know, uh, have to use a CDAC or a CDU, okay? So why? Because for each and uh, every uh, measurement, like temperature, strain, or current, we are having a different sort of, you know, uh, hardware or sensors, okay? So here, if you see, if you want to measure the temperature, so I have to go with respect to thermocouple or RTD or thermistor. Means this sort of, you know, uh, to say the sensors, thermistor or RTD or thermocouple should be available so that you can able to connect for your hardware and you can able to measure. But as of now, we'll be just trying to concentrate on the voltage, okay, only the voltage part and I'll be selecting the voltage, okay. So now if you see, uh, here you have to select the hardware on what type of a hardware uh, right now we are dealing is with a MIDAC. So I'll just select a MIDAC. So after selecting a MIDAC, it is asking uh, via which channel you are uh, trying to acquire. Okay. So here we are having different channels like AI0 is one channel, AI1 is one more channel audio left, audio right and DMM. So these are all comes under the analog section. So it will be showing the analog parts okay so since uh, we are trying to deal with uh, ai0 i'll just select ai0 channel and click on finish okay so after clicking on finish fine so here it will uh, show the DACA strengths the voltage range okay plus or uh, minus 10 volt maybe if you want you can just reduce the voltage like plus 5 to minus 5 also Okay, that's no, uh, no worries. Okay, fine. Here also the same way acquisition mode will be one sample on demand or continuous sample, like based on uh, our requirement. So if you want, you can just go with the continuous samples and click on OK. Okay, now it is building a VI in a backend team. Okay. So now it is asking one auto confirmation. Okay. So since we have used the continuous samples, okay. So it is asking me to keep it inside a loop. Okay. So why? Because I cannot run single time with the continuous samples. Okay. So if you want to acquire all the samples, whatever you have kept, so it is uh, you know mandatory to keep it inside a loop. Okay. So if you click on yes, automatically it will be kept inside a while loop. Okay. So if you click on no, so it will not keep inside. Instead, you have to uh, keep it by yourself. Fine. So I'll just bring all these things things inside. Okay. So now whatever the data we got here, the DACA strand data, I'll just directly connect to this, all the three output, means the indicators. So if I just click on run, you're getting some sort of uh, voltage. Okay, so you're getting around, uh, actually speaking, you're getting only the voltage. Okay, so whatever uh, you're given here, it is a voltage. Okay, it's not, you know, that exact a temperature part fine so if i click on run you are getting like 0.29 okay 
some sort of uh, voltage you are getting. Okay. So, but if we want to just check it in a temperature, what uh, we have to make is we have to just make a small conversion here. Okay. So, what will be that small conversion is I'll just try to, I know, uh, multiply it by 10. Okay. So, whatever the here output I get. So I'll just try to multiply. And just take a constant, numeric constant, and then just type it as a pen. I'll be connecting to all this. Okay. So now if you click on run, okay. Sorry, I want to multiply it with hundred. Why? Because I am, you know, trying to expect two digits. Yes. Now you can just see you are getting around, you know, uh, twenty-eight point one seven something. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll just try to. I uh, you know hold uh, the LM35 sensor some uh, tightly, okay. So with my body temperature, so that it starts increasing. You can just see. So it was uh, already 28 or 29. So now it is keep on increasing. Why? Because I hold uh, you know tightly with that LM35 sensor with my two fingers. Okay. So it is going you know uh, more than why? Because the heat is generating uh, from uh, my body means. Uh, the, through the finger, the heat is generating, so that's why it is you know uh, trying to reach uh, you know more. So now I just uh, keep it here, left. So I just left it. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so now it is keep on increasing, and I just uh, keep it left. So it is trying to reduce. I know uh, some like an, uh, very minutely it will be keep on. Uh, you know reducing, but if you see, so previously it was you know jumping up to uh, 36, 37, 38, right? So uh, now we can just see it is uh, minutely it is decreasing. Yes, so now it is come back to 31, 30. Right. So it will not immediately get back to uh, the uh, you know, normal uh, position or normal uh, values, but it takes some time. Okay. So uh, now it is so, you know previously it was 30. Now it is come back to 29. So again, if you you know uh, just hold tightly that sensor with my two fingers. So you can just see gradually it has been increasing 33, 34, 35, yes, 36. Okay, I'll just I'll leave now. I just left out the sensor. So now it is, I know, uh, taking some time and it is reducing gradually. Yes, so now we can easily say this can be you know uh, acquiring all the terms and moreover if you see here okay so having some digits like uh, decimal digits 30.6533 okay and it will be keep on vary randomly it will be keep on giving some number so whatever the point you are getting here like 6.65.33 or uh, this kind of thing okay. So this will be, you know, uh, the continuous sample. So using these continuous samples, so it will not even leave, you know, the single point. Okay. So all the points, whatever the points you are, you know, uh, trying to trying to read it back. So using a continuous sample, 
So each and every individual precision point will be uh, acquired. Okay. So it will be acquired and it will be you know uh, displayed over here. So and uh, one more uh, you know the option, uh, the very nice option here they are given will be uh, the file IOs. Okay. So using a file IOs, you can just try to update it into a file IO. Fine. So uh, even that seems to be very uh, good. Okay. So why? Because uh, we'll be not you know uh, trying to effect click on run. Okay. It is not you know uh, readable or it is not like uh, you know human readable. It is very very much faster and we cannot able to trace out very easy, right? So for that sake, what you can do, you can just try to use a file I/O options and here you can uh, you know try to update for your file. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, you people have been worked on this you know uh, the file I/Os where you can able to read and write from the files. Okay. So even uh, these things can be done using uh, you know the lab. Okay, so it will be very much easy. Okay, and uh, if even though if the students they are trying to you know acquire any signal, uh, either it might be a sine square or triangle or any sort of uh, projects if they are doing. Okay, if they want to update, uh, if they are unable to note them. Okay. So since in their lab also, I hope you people have been seeing that will be keep on you know. Uh, checking the volts per division as well as uh, voltage peak to peak, and they'll be multiplying and they'll be getting some results. Okay, so those things can be automatically done by the lab. Okay, so whatever the voltage you are getting, so either it may be a 5 millivolt or 5 volt or 2 millivolt. Okay, so that, uh, that voltage will be multiplied with you know uh, the amplitude volts per division. Okay. So then uh, time per division. So ultimately, at what uh, rate the signals are, what will be the frequency. So all those things by just giving a simple formula, we can able to derive that. Okay. So these sort of options or these sort of facilities have been you know uh, available in the lab view. So where it will be very much useful for the students and even uh, the time period also it will be reduced. Reduced. Okay. Say example, uh, like uh, they'll be having a tabular column. Okay, so in the tabular column, they have to be you know uh, noted the volts per division separately and time per division separately. They have to just multiply with that, and ultimately they have to uh, use the calc use their calculator, and ultimately they will be getting some result. Okay, so instead of going doing all those things, okay, so in the lab itself, they can able to uh, get into. Right. So, and uh, even you know, uh, here we can just try to uh, you know adjust the things. If at all you are getting only you know uh, the number greater than 30 or greater than 40 degree, you have to just uh, you know get it to this part. Okay. So these things have been uh, you know uh, very much like think that. So I'll be just doing one uh, very simple comparison. I'll just take one uh, round LED and I'll just give an as alert. Okay, so since it is in green color, so alert or in the sense obviously it will be in a red color, right? I hope. So I'll just right click, uh, go to properties. Okay, I'll just change the on color into red. Okay, so I'll just click on OK. So what alert I am just going to do is. So I just try to compare uh, whether if it is uh, greater than or equal to or only greater than. Okay. So if it is only greater than uh, the 30 or uh, 32 degree or 35 degree. So based on uh, this, you know, the student's requirement or our requirement, if it is greater than this part, this portion. Okay. So I have to get an alert. So if I run, so I'm not getting any alert since I'm, um, you know, uh, below that uh, the range. Okay. So if I just start uh, holding that sensor tightly, it is, you know, uh, going greater than. Yes. Now I got the alert. Why? Because uh, it is, you know, greater than 32. So now I just try to leave my finger on that sensor. So it is coming down. Okay, so 
obviously if it is comes down it is you know the alert will be gone means there will be no alert if it is you know greater than 32 yes it is giving me alert okay like this sort of you know uh, the very simple application maybe instead of uh, you know showing the alert in an led okay, maybe they can able to uh, connect a buzzer or a fan okay so or a motor anything okay so since uh, you know i don't have any sort of you know uh, necessary hardware or so necessary sensors i just shown it here virtually but if the students are you know they are, if they are very much really interested in it, if they want to go with uh, you know the hardware sections or a hardware part okay so this sort of you know uh, integrating with two or uh, you know two or three more sensors can be done fine so these things can be uh, you know done with uh, respect to the uh, mind and uh, moreover here uh, you know one more advantage will be like here uh, you can just try to generate some signal some randomly you are generating some sine wave or square wave okay so using the soft front panel here you can just acquire it back okay so even uh, that is possible and uh, moreover uh, coming back to connection part so i told you that uh, you know all the pins like uh, vcc ground Okay, and uh, output pin, everything should be connected. Along with that, uh, you have to mandatorily you have to connect uh, the negative to the ground. Okay, so now what I'll do, I'll just try to remove uh, some uh, one part. So which part I'll be just removing will be uh, AI zero minus two AGNT. So I'll just try to remove that uh, single wire. Okay. Yes, I have been removed. Okay, so now I just click on run. So now we have seen what we ultimately what the output you are getting. Okay, so now I have just removed uh, you know a single wire from AI zero minus two AGND. So now you just see you are getting uh, the values in a minus part. So even though I just hold the sensor uh, you know very tightly, it is just uh, going like minus two and minus two twelve something. Okay, now I just, I know, uh, left the finger. Okay, so now we can just see some randomly some data is keep on going. Okay, so but when you just try to uh, connect the, you know, the previous via AI 0 minus to AGMD, so you can just see, uh, you know, we will be getting actual voltage or actual temperature, what we call. Yes, so now I just uh hold it tightly so that i can just see gradually it's increasing so and i just leave uh, okay so you can just see it is you are getting it in you know somewhere randomly it's keep on moving why because i have not connected a, a proper negative term it means the differential end have not been connected so that's why it is showing uh in that manner a ground properly so ultimately, we'll be getting a proper reset. Okay, so uh, that is where I can just you know uh, tell you that make sure that a proper grounding should be given. So if at all you are you know fail to give a proper grounding, then uh, you know there is no use of uh, connecting to any sort of hardware. So with you know uh, the proper uh, thing. Yes okay so if at all you're having any doubts please let me know so that i'll uh, just clarify the things Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
హలో హలో సార్ యా సార్ హలో సో లెట్ మీ నో సార్ ఇఫ్ ఎట్ ఆల్ యూ పీపల్ ఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎనీ డౌట్స్ లైక్ ఐదర్ ఇట్ మే బి మార్నింగ్ సెషన్ ఆర్ ఇన్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ సెషన్ సో దట్ ఐ జస్ట్ స్టార్ట్ యూనో గివింగ్ యూ the answers like whatever the doubts you have so that maybe we'll just try to uh, wind up the session any participants if you have any doubts regarding the sessions continue so far you can ask uh, with the satnar and sir Sir. sir i think uh, no doubt sir you can uh, conclude i think yes sir so uh, fine so we are just you know uh, came to an uh, end okay, end of the session so uh, well just i'll just uh, recap the things like whatever i have been done from the morning okay so first thing is we have been learnt about you know uh, mida the data acquisition hardware okay so where it has been uh, well developed uh, by the company called nasna instruments fine so uh, you know uh, we have seen just seen the applications we have just seen the features okay so where all we can just uh, try to use and the, how it will be useful for the students okay so we have all just seen uh, you know all those things okay maybe if you want you know a more number of inputs and more number of outputs either it may be analog or digital okay so maybe you can just go for a next version even we have one more dac called a usb dac okay so it is much more compact for uh, you know compatible with uh, my dac actually speaking okay, it is uh, you know a tiny device which is you know square type okay so it is you know it is having a more number of uh, dios and more number of ios okay so and uh, one disadvantage with the usb dac and the my dac is usb dac cannot be uh, worked with uh, you know the multimeter or it cannot be worked with audio input audio output okay that is one uh, major disadvantage okay so that's why they have been introduced a dac of you know the my dac for the student version where additional to the multimeter as well as audio input audio output fine so uh, these sort of you know advantages have been uh, introduced like all the sig- all the equipments like all uh, function generator oscilloscope multimeter audio input okay so all those things have been integrated with a very single uh, device or single hardware so maybe uh, you know uh, these sort of things we if we try to expose for the students okay so even it might be helpful for their career as well as they can able to learn uh, engineering concepts very well they can understand theoretically as well as practically but as i feel that you know the students uh, uh, you know they are just lagging behind the theory, uh, you know practical part okay so since uh, we are all just trying to explain them theoretically okay uh, some few students they will be understanding uh, you know much part with theoretically but some students they you know if they try to show us them in a very practical way or practical manner okay so obviously uh, they'll be come up with uh, you know uh, very good uh, understanding with the concepts and you know, usually obviously uh, they'll be getting uh, very good marks in their exams okay so uh, you know that's what uh, you know our aim so uh, even a uh, va solutions also just trying to build you know the bridge between the academy as well as industry actually we'll be you know always working with respect to uh, industrial part or industrial projects okay so we will be dealing with respect to uh, all kinds of nna hardware right so uh, that's what uh, we are just trying to you know helping the students that try to bridge you know build a bridge between the academy as well as the industry why because we we people will be knowing in industry what uh, you know the expectation will be there 
Okay, so what kind of uh, the thing the students uh, they'll be just testing their knowledge. What till what kind of thing they can able to do? What is their ability? Okay, what all the things they know? If these all I know what all the things I explained uh, you know right now for the today's session. At least these things if the students have been known so that they can easily get up into a job. Okay, there will be no you know uh, any sort of you know level technical level or anything. So if they are you know uh, having a good idea about this industrial sort of hardware, so obviously or it will be even easy for a recruiter to directly recruit for the students. Okay, so that is what you know uh, our thing. So uh, I hope uh, the session was nice and it was good. Okay. So if anything is there, so you can just uh, let me know so that I'll just try to conclude the session. Yes, Hari sir. Hello. Yes, sir. So I just concluded from my end. So if okay. you are having anything, sir, uh, maybe. No, no, sir. Very good session, sir. Thank you for. Yeah, sure, sir. Thank you very much. Hello. Is this your pen drive yeah? Is it audible, sir? Yeah, sir. Yeah, audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? So we'll uh, exit the meeting, sir. Yeah, sure, sir. Thank you. I thank all the participants for your active participation. Thank you.